This video will talk about the law of combining volumes and Avogadro's theory, which are both very related to each other and are section 4.2 in your textbook. Gay-Lussac did chemical reactions, and what he looked at is he looked at the relative volumes of gases. That means he's doing reactions and he's measuring how much of each gas is being produced or consumed in the reaction. What he found is that when we're at the same temperature and pressure, and that's important that you're measuring at the same temperature and pressure, the volume of gaseous reactants and products of chemo chemical reactions are always in simple ratios of whole numbers. An example of this would be that if we're looking at the reaction that's down here at the bottom, you can see that if we're decomposing liquid water, we're going to get volumes of hydrogen and oxygen gas. And what the Gay-Lussac's law of combining volumes is saying is that if we are decomposing water, we are always going to get exactly double the hydrogen than we will the oxygen. In the simple ratio of whole numbers here, we can see that we have double the hydrogen and, uh, than we will the oxygen. Avogadro's theory is very related. So Avogadro, two years after Gay-Lussac's law of combining volumes, volumes came in place, said that if we have gases that are at equal volume and they're also at equal temperature and pressure, they will always contain the same amount of molecules. What that means is if we're looking at a balanced chemical equation, that the volume ratio will also be the same as the mole ratio in the balanced chemical equation. So the example that we just did was 2 to 1, we're going to get 2 times the hydrogen, then we will oxygen. So we're going to get 2 times the moles of hydrogen, as well as 2 times the volume of hydrogen. And this is called Avogadro's theory. When we look at Avogadro's theory and the law of combining volumes together, if we're looking at, for example, the reaction that I'm putting in a box down here at the left, we are taking nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas and we're making ammonia. What we see from this balanced chemical equation is that the coefficient of nitrogen is going to be 1, the coefficient of hydrogen gas is 3, and the coefficient of ammonia is 2. What that means we have, based on Avogadro's theory, is chemical amounts. We are going to have 1 mole of nitrogen, 3 moles of hydrogen, and 2 moles of ammonia. Based on the law of combining volumes, it means that we would need 1 liter of nitrogen for 3 liters of hydrogen for 2 liters of ammonia. We can do calculations based on this. So if I was looking for the volume of hydrogen gas, and I told you that you had 2 milliliters of nitrogen, then you could say, okay, I know that I have 2 milliliters of nitrogen, and I know that for every 3 moles or milliliters of hydrogen, I am going to need 1 milliliter or mole of nitrogen, which means I'm going to have 2 multiplied by 3 divided by 1, which will get me 6 milliliters of hydrogen required. If I'm starting with the same 2 milliliters of nitrogen, then I'm going to say I know that I need 2 milliliters of nitrogen. and I'm going to put the molar ratio of nitrogen on the bottom, so I have 1 milliliter of nitrogen for every 2 milliliters of ammonia, which means I'm doing 2 times 2 divided by 1 is going to get me 4 milliliters of NH3 that will be produced. An example of a question that you could get is the bold at the top here. Use the law of combining volumes to predict the volume of oxygen required for the complete combustion of 120 milliliters of butane gas from a lighter. Your first step here every time is to write a balanced chemical equation. So what I'm going to do underneath my balanced chemical equation is put down what I have and my question mark. So in this case, my balanced chemical question or equation sorry, for the combustion of butane is right here at the top. And I know that I have 120 milliliters of butane. And I know that my question mark, what I'm looking for, is the volume of oxygen. Your second step, what we need to do is we need to use our mole ratio to figure out our question mark. So from this chemical equation, we can see that we are going to have 13 moles of oxygen. You can see the 13 as the coefficient for oxygen for every 2 moles of butane. What that means is that we are going to need a, a larger volume of oxygen because we know we're going to need 13 moles of oxygen for every 2 moles of butane. In order to figure out the, the volume of oxygen, we're going to start with what we know. So I'm going to start with my 120 milliliters of butane, C4H10, and I'm going to multiply it by something that eventually will get me the milliliters of oxygen. So when you think about unit analysis here, that means that I need to have my oxygen on the top 
and I need to have my C4H10 on the bottom. So C4H10 on the bottom. I know that I'm going to need 2 moles of C4H10 for every 13 moles of oxygen, which means when I'm crossing things out, my butane is being crossed out, and I'm going to have left my milliliters of oxygen, which is exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm going to do 120 times 13 divided by 2, and my answer, I will end up with 780 milliliters of oxygen. Significant digits from the question, I have 3, so I'm giving back 3. Second example here again, a catalytic converter in the exhaust system of a car uses oxygen from the air to convert carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide, which is released through the tailpipe. So what it's telling me here is that it is using oxygen from the air, which I've put into my equation right here, to convert carbon monoxide into carbon dioxide. And that's being released from the tailpipe. So the question told me what my balanced chemical equation would be here. It says if we assume the same temperature and pressure, which again is a requirement of using law of combining volumes or Avogadro's theory, what volume of oxygen, so that's my question mark, is required to react with 125 liters of carbon monoxide during a 100 kilometer trip? We do not care at all how many kilometers it is. So that number there is unnecessary. So again, first step, you can see I've already done it for you, is the balanced chemical equation. I write down what I know, and I write down my question mark. Now, my second step from this equation, you can see that one mole of oxygen, and again, the one mole of oxygen, because that's the coefficient of oxygen in your balanced chemical equation, is required for every two moles of carbon dioxide. Again, that's my balanced, chem or my balanced chemical equation, the coefficient of carbon monoxide. Therefore, what we can see by that, because we're going to need two moles of carbon monoxide for every one mole of oxygen, is the volume is going to be less for our answer that we get at the end. So here I've set up, I'm starting with 125 liters of carbon monoxide, which means my carbon monoxide needs to go on the bottom. I know that I am going to have two moles of carbon monoxide, for every one mole of oxygen, and that means that by unit analysis, I can cross out my carbon monoxide, my carbon monoxide, my moles, and my moles, and what I have left is liters of oxygen, which is exactly what I'm looking for in my answer. My answer here is going to be 62.5, and significant digits, I have three, and I was given three in the question, so we are good to go. Just a clarification point, the equivalence between chemical amounts, that means moles or coefficients, and the volume will only work for gases, and it will only work if they're at the same temperature and the same pressure. You can start to work away on these practice questions. Good luck!